Hey everyone, Amber from the Vault here. Welcome back to more of the Knife Sisters. We're gonna go ahead and just jump right back in, but before we do, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the publisher for giving me a copy of this. So I can go ahead and play it for you here on the channel. Before we jump in, I do want to remind you too that there are some themes in this game that might be disturbing to some, including BDSM as well as some uh, heavily sexual themes. So just remember that this is probably more of a rated R game. Just want to remind you up front, but let's go ahead and jump back in. We'll see you guys back in just a sec. Okay, now we gotta meet with Ayana because we have to make plans! I was back at the cafe to meet Ayana. As soon as I opened the door, I saw she wasn't alone. Will was with her. Hi, Leo! Look his back. Oh. It was really weird to see him sitting there. As if he would be able to read my face that I was trying to break into his house yesterday. But unfortunately, he didn't seem to have that kind of power. He looked just as usual. Happy-go-lucky and a bit dim. Hi! Was Barbados any good? Good question. It was. As I said, I was forced to hang out on the beach, go surfing, and drink cocktails for one whole week. I guess he could be worse off. But I miss my party peeps. He looked mischievous. And that's why I have a party- well, wait. That's why I'm gonna have a party on Friday. My parents are going away for the weekend. Are you guys gonna come? I'll definitely come. Oh, that was a surprise. Absolutely. It would be interesting to see what would happen when everyone got warmed up. Cool. Then someone approached our table. It was Vicky. She sure had a way of showing up wherever I went. Hi, Leo. Oh, hi, Vicky. She looked cute, as always. Say hello to my friends, Ayana and Will. Hi. Vicky is my friend, Ayana and Will. Hi, Vicky. I smiled at her to make her feel more comfortable, and she gave them a smile back. Do you want to sit down with us? She nodded, but didn't say much more. Then Will caught her gaze, and his teeth glistened as he gave her a big smile. Say, Vicky, would you like to come to the party this Friday? Her eyes widened. It's at my place. My parents' place, that is. Yeah, I guess. She looked around. Are you going? Of course. I nodded, too. She seemed relieved. Okay, then I'll come. Yay! I have to go to go to lecture. I have to go to a lecture now, but see you Friday. He took his bag and hurried off. Ayana and I looked at each other. I suppose it was time for Ayana and Vicky to get to know each other a little better. If Vicky could feel secure enough to open her mouth, that was. Anyone want to get a second cup? Okay, so we're at the party day. I don't know what's gonna happen here. All right, so Ayana, Mo, and I arrived for the party together. So just real quick, I noticed that we our essence is down to four now. So when it got to six, because I think that's where it, where it was, right? Did something happen and I just not realize it? Also, we're still careless, I noticed. Uh, we went inside. Oh, shoot, I did it again. Will was something. Cool, party family's here. Ayana and Will hugged. I tried to keep a low profile to avoid physical contact. There's booze and mixers in the kitchen. Got some different things from the trip. Just help yourself. Ayana dragged us toward the kitchen table and poured herself a large plastic mug of some sugary drink. You guys want anything? Both Bo and I shook our heads. I'll get us some water. We walked around the house. Most people were on the bottom floor where a big living room and kitchen were merged together into a huge lounge. A door opened onto a terrace and I heard loud laughter from out there. There was a second floor as well, but I figured it was a bit early to explore that. Then I saw Vicky coming from the terrace. She looked a little lost. Vicky! She came towards us. Hi, Vicky. Have you been here for long? No, I just arrived a half hour or so ago. She looked happy, but didn't say anything else. Will came toward us again. With him was a friend of his who was just as generically good looking as he himself was. Okay, I can see that. Hey gang, this is Tom. Hi gang, <laughs> we have an idea. What about playing Never Have I Ever? What was that? You've never played Never Have I Ever, really? How does it work? Someone gives an example of something they've never done, starting with the words, never have I ever. And those who have done the thing have to take a sip of their drinks. Okay. You want to join? Why not? Okay. But I'll only drink water. Will frowned, but Ayana nodded approvingly. Of course. Tom seemed eager. 
Yeah, and another rule is that if there's only one person taking a sip, they have to explain why they're drinking. Yeah, exactly. Now, does everyone have drinks? Vicky shook her head. Will went away and soon came back with a big glass for her. Here you go, just in case. He shot off a dazzling smile at her, and she looked back at him somewhat incredulously. And there were people taking up the sofa, so we sat down on the floor beside it. Okay, so who wants to go first? Well, I can do it. She took a deep breath for effect, and then got going. Never have I ever had sex with anyone with a dick. One that's made of meat, that is. Um, well, I don't know the answer. Like, I don't actually know what my sexuality is. Um, I don't know. I kept holding my glass. Will burst into laughter. So that's it. What a good start. You're up next, Mo. Mo looked a little reluctant. Never have I ever cheated on a test. It depends on what you mean by cheating, but I might have used Google a little more than was appropriate in some cases, so I guess I'll have to drink to that. Then I guess it's my turn. The obvious one is already taken, but I think I'll go along the same lines. Never have I ever taken it up the ass. Okay. I took a large gulp from my water glass. Mo, Vicky, and I all looked at each other in some sort of union. Woo, it's getting hot in here. But now it's a, it's you, Tom. I guess you'll take it back to lame statements. Yeah, never have I ever cheated on anyone. I held on to my glass. Will, still looking disbelieving, was the only one who drunk. So what's the story behind that? Uh, it's pretty tame. Last year I had a girlfriend, then she went abroad during the summer. We tried to keep the relationship going, but then I met someone else and stuff happened. I broke up with her afterwards. It wasn't a big deal. Okay. Same old boring story, I guess. Was that Dagger? Okay. I think it's your turn now, Leo. Oh, yeah. I had to say something too. Um... Never have I ever had a monogamous relationship. All others except Vicky drank. I wish I hadn't, though. Will turned to Vicky. But you haven't. Vicky blushed heavily. I sort of didn't have many relationships at all. She caught my glaze. Or my gaze, excuse me. And the ones I've had have been... Have not been monogamous, no. Not because I chose it, though. We'll change the subject. I think it's your turn now, Vicky. Oh, yeah, it is. She took a deep breath. Never have I ever let someone believe there was more between us than there was just to affirm myself. Oh, shit. Uh. Uh. I kept my glass in my hand. Some of the others drank, others did not. I had stopped watching. I had a strong sense that the game was over now. I'm gonna get something more to drink. My glass is fucking empty. Don't brag. We all got up from the floor and Tom did the same. The movement spread and the group headed toward the kitchen and other places. I saw Will turning to Vicky. Hand me your glass. I'll fill it up for you. I fell behind. I was tired of talking to people. I headed out onto the terrace to get some fresh air. Having forgotten that that's where the smokers hang out. After breathing in smoke for a while, I went back in. I started to think about what Dagger had said. Yeah, I'm really worried that Vicky's getting roofied. It has to be something that either comes from their body, like hair, or it has to be something that's emotionally important to them. I had a sense I needed to get into Will's room. I walked up the stairs. There weren't many people on the second floor, but I heard muffled voices coming from different rooms. I peeked in a room, but it seemed to belong to Will's parents, and it was occupied. Down the hall was another room with the door slightly open. I recognized Will's voice coming from inside. Through the small gap in the wall, I could peek into the room. Will was there with Tom. I kept still, focusing on their conversation. It's pretty tough. At first, I was only thinking about getting in, but now it's also about passing the exams. I know. But I don't regret us doing it. Neither do I. My parents were sort of expecting me to get in. What would have happened if my if both my grades and the test results had been too low to get me in? I just had to make it. It was worth paying for. 
even if it was a pretty hefty sum. Now I just need to get through six years of education. Haha, <laughs> yeah, but there's always the possibility of getting some help with assignments as well. I know, I know. Okay, so Will hadn't gotten into medical school on his own merits. I wondered what Ayana would say if she had heard that. But it's sort of weird that it came up in the game, don't you think? I know. Good thing there were two of us. Then they started moving. I quickly headed farther down the corridor and hid around the corner. I saw them leave the room and headed toward the stairs. What about finding us some pussy? Tom laughed. Sounds ace. They left without noticing me. Okay, my turn then. I sneaked into the room. So I was finally here. That took some effort. Now I had to be quick. Okay, okay, okay. Where to look? Mm, bedside table. There was a notebook. Should I go through it? What if someone would come in? Read it! I opened the notebook, and it fell open to the last written page. It seemed to be some sort of diary. I started to read. I don't know why this is happening to me, and I really don't know what to do with it. It's too stupid. Too fucking stupid. Maybe I should try talking to them. Or is it better to just try and forget? But I don't think I can. I love them too much. Seems like Will had some love problems. Was it Ayana? But when I'd seen the two of them together, it almost seemed like she was more keen on him than he was on her. Maybe I had interpreted it all wrong. Well, if he was in love with Ayana, then at least that was something good about him. If he liked her, he couldn't be completely fucked up. On the other hand, they were related. Not very closely, but they were still second cousins. Maybe that's why he was so bothered by it. I tucked the notebook back in the drawer. Where should I look now? I opened the door to the wardrobe. It was crammed with stuff, mainly clothes. On the top shelf were boxes, some miniature models. Okay, so he liked gluing pieces of plastic together. Maybe it meant a lot to him. I wasn't sure Dagger would accept them. I better look somewhere else. I approached the chest of drawers, on top of which Will seemed to store his hairspray, deodorant, and the like. There was a hairbrush as well. Score! I took a bunch of hairs out of it and tucked them into my pocket. Then I hurried out. Out in the corridor, I heard laughter and loud cheering. As I went down the stairs, I bumped into Mo. There you are. I've been looking for you. There were so many people in the hallway that Mo's body got pushed against mine. I could smell the spicy scent from their steaming body. What have you done? Gone through some kind of marathon? They smiled. Just had a little bit of a fight. Their eyes glistened. I could sense that they hadn't gotten enough. They caught my gaze. Smiling. And then they grabbed my neck and kissed me. Half tenderly, half violently. I kissed them back. Their teeth scraped against my lips, biting them softly. They were such a good kisser. Then they let me go, looking mischievous. I gotta go find someone. Oh, shit! But Something! And then they were off. I went to the kitchen where Ayana was hanging out with Tom. Have you lost Will? I think he's busy. We stood there and chatted for a while until I got bored again. Drunk people really had no clue how tedious they could be. I walked out into the hallway. I suddenly bumped into Vicky. Oh, sorry! I took one glance at her face to notice that she was completely devastated. As I looked into her eyes, she started to cry. Come here. I grabbed her arm and pushed her into the bathroom. As I locked the door, she started sobbing heavily. What happened? It was... Oh god, I'm so fucking stupid. Cold sensation went through me. I had to make her tell me what happened. No, come on, you're not stupid for reacting. Obviously something happened to you. Tell me about it. Okay. Vicky sat down on the bathroom rug. She looked at me. I got a bit jealous when you were kissing Mo before. Oh, so she had seen that. I know I can't demand anything of you. I know we're not like... You know, but it still got to me because I like you. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I, I thought I just had to find someone else to have fun with instead. And then Will turned up. He offered me a drink, and then he asked if I wanted to get away from the noise for a while. I, I wanted that. So we went upstairs to his bedroom. Okay, I, I can sort of see where this is going. New tears fell down Vicky's face, and she seemed to have a harder time getting the words out. After a while, we started making out. We did that for a while. She covered her face with her hands. And suddenly he froze. She looked queasy. He got up and said, I can't do this. I 
new batch of tears rolled down her cheeks and her voice cracked. Didn't he say why? She shook her head. No, he just repeated, I can't do this with you, and then left. It was like he was disgusted by me. What an asshole. She nodded. I know. She cried. Someone should smash his head in. She stopped sobbing for a second and nodded. And someone banged on the door and I heard a voice I recognized. Leo, are you in there? Can I come in? I looked at Vicky. Wait a minute. Vicky, it's Mo. Can I let them in? Okay. I opened the door and let Mo in. I saw Vicky sitting on the floor. Oh, what's going on? Vicky's upset. Vicky looked at Mo with teary eyes. Can I tell them what happened? Vicky nodded. And I told the story. What an idiot! Mo sat down next to Vicky. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Tears rolled down Vicky's cheeks. Mo stroked her back, waiting for Vicky's own words. I don't know if it was because... Her voice faded. Because you're trans? She nodded. If it was, I wish he'd at least have said so, so I know. Now I have no idea. I just feel stupid and worthless. Mo put their arm around Vicky's shoulder and pulled her close. You're the sweetest thing. You shouldn't have been put through things like that. You should just receive tons of love, because that's what you deserve. I felt something churn inside of me. Seeing Mo comfort Vicky that easily, it was as if it was a completely automatic... They knew exactly what to say. For me, it was the hardest thing in the world. Why must it be that way? Mo looked up. He seemed to read me. Come here, Leo. Sit with us. He reached out for my hand. I took it and we all sat down on the rug. Mo put their arm around my back as well and we curled up close to each other. Vicky wasn't crying anymore. Mo looked at us and pulled us closer. Just fuck them. And, and all of them. We are the heroes in this story. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching me play The Knife Sisters. If you like this game, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all those YouTube things. As always, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and you haven't already, go ahead and click on that picture of my big dumb head. Click on that bell icon if you'd like to be notified every time I post a brand new video, as well as on the right hand side of your screen there, there should be some random videos, things that YouTube thinks you'd like, and something that I put up there. I don't know what I did, I did it in post, as well as a bunch of names in the middle of your screen. Those are the Twitter handles for my current patrons over on Patreon. They really do keep this channel running. I wouldn't be able to do it without all of those folks. So if you would like to go ahead and say thank you to them, go ahead and follow them over on Twitter. Give them some likes. Tell them they're awesome because they truly are. If you'd like to become one of those names in the center of the screen, those are all of my Patreons. My patrons over on Patreon, I should say. At the time that I recorded this video, if you'd like to become one, go ahead and click in the lower left hand screen there. It says something about extra video content, bonus content, videos, things like that. Go ahead and click that to learn more about that. We're going to go ahead and get out of here though, so I'll see you all in the next one.